Hey guys, Christian here, and I am recording on a new device. I just got a Galaxy Tab A, and I'm going to see what the video quality is like. It's a little bit easier to use than a point-and-shoot camera to uh, record video. And so I'm going to go ahead and use uh, this palm here, um, which is Caryota Midas, or the clumping fishtail palm, uh, to try as a uh, sample here. So I can always make another video, but I want to see how well it does um, with this tablet. So we'll see. It's it's in uh, 720p, so hopefully that'll be uh, pretty good. Um, we'll just see if the quality is good on the uh, on the computer. So anyway, um, the uh, Caryota Midas is probably the most one of the more common clumping palms you'll find in Central and South Florida. It is native to uh, South South and Southeast Asia and it is a better known as the fishtail palm the, or the common fishtail palm um, we're gonna get a little close up here to the leaflets now you can see the leaves actually look like fishtails so that's where it gets its name from they're serrated they're not they don't come to it um, to a straight tip or to a point and that's where they get kind of get their name a lot of leaflets do this and a lot of times you can actually tell the difference between two species of a, or one genus and another genus of a palm uh, by, by the, the fact that it has prey morse leaflets or serrated leaflets. And uh, as a result, you know, it, it's very helpful. There's many uh, ways to tag a palm and determine kind of like by process of elimination, okay, well, what, uh, what, you know, what's, what genus is this palm from? What species is it? Because a lot of times I'll get a palm a picture of a palm and someone will say well what palm is this and so you kind of have to go through a, a process of elimination there so I try my best to kind of stabilize this here so um, like I said this is from Asia um, it is a monocarpic palm which means that if as you can see right here I don't know how well that comes up with the light but there is a uh, flower stalk that has uh, now turned into uh, it's been pollinated and is now seeds and when those seeds ripen and fall off, that stalk actually dies. So the solitary versions of this palm, which are giant, or some can be giant, um, and I'll do a video on those. Uh, they are, let me get, get back here, kind of move around me. So the solitary versions of these are huge. The leaflets um, are just absolutely massive. And I'll get a, a, a video of a, the giant fishtail palm, uh, Caryota maxima. Uh, and that they will die afterwards, so that will become a dead stock. So warning, if you are going to plant a solitary uh, caryota or solitary fishtail, you're going to have a big telephone pole once it, once it seeds. So luckily with this, this plant won't actually die outright. It, just one stock will die, and then the next one will come up. And uh, it, it's it's relatively it's surprisingly not very messy for a plant that whose stalk dies and is not uh, I mean sorry whose trunk dies and uh, does not have a it's not crown shafted none of the caratoidy caratoidea family of uh, palms uh, have crown shafts but uh, the good thing about this is it's relatively easy to grow this gets no irrigation whatsoever um, it does sit in full sun here in uh, southwest florida and you can see the leaflets kind of growing you know kind of pushing out there almost like a fishtail uh in itself but the reason it gets the name is because of the actual leaflet now this is a unique uh, pa uh palm leaf because it's not only pinnate palm frond I call it it's, uh it's not only pinnate but it's bipinnate so you see this comes out here as a pinnate, as a feather leaf, pinnate leaf, and then it actually has offsets that actually come off the main rachis as a pinnate leaf. So it's bipinnate, meaning it has two orders of branching on the actual pinnate leaf. And Caryota is the only uh, genus of palm that actually does that. And so you can tell right away if you see something that's bipinnate. I'm sorry, you can see a palm frond that is bipinnate. It is going to be a Caryota, as far as my, I can, as far as I can think. There's no other bipinnate genus of uh, palm out there. So I think that's kind of neat. Um, you know, it, it makes it unique. Another uh, thing to uh, point out, and uh, yeah, this is not as stabilized as I wish it were, 
but uh, <laughs> to point out is that uh, this the oh the seeds when they are good they will either be red or black, and when they are ripe, do not pick them up with your bare hands because the fruit itself, not the seed, but the fruit in which it's encapsulated, it'll have each fruit will tend to have um, depending on the species between uh, one and three seeds in it. It'll kind of be like a triangle. They're, they're wedged, so it's almost like putting three wedge pieces together in a in a fruit. And they have oxycalcate crystals, which is the equivalent. It's like nature's fiberglass. So if you put your uh, if you just uh, squish them around with your hands, you're gonna ha start itching quite a bit. Uh, I can tell you guys a little story. When I used to work at Fairchild back about ten years ago, uh, you're not supposed to collect seeds at Fairchild, although. For the most part, they don't really mind if you collect seeds as long as they weren't looking to collect them for their own accession reasons. Um, some a, a man was trying to hide the fact that he was collecting seed, and he was collecting seed of a carry. Actually, it was an orenga, which is a, uh, is a is a close relative, and I will do a uh, a palm review on orengas, uh, as they're they're really neat plants. Um, they he decided to hide them in his uh jogging shorts or uh, athletic shorts and he didn't um know about this uh fruit issue so he ended up uh being in so much pain from the the itching and uh the burning of the the crystals that he ac actually had to get uh, sent to the hospital in miami so uh do not attempt to um clean this clean the fruit with uh gloves on just use regular like dishwashing gloves, so it kind of covers your wrist too. It's just it's very uncomfortable. Um, I've I've gotten it on me. It's not terrible, but it's just it's annoying. It's annoying on your hands. It's probably going to be even more annoying on other parts of your body. So uh, let that be a lesson learned for for him and uh, you know, kind of for anyone that wants to collect seed. Just you know, make sure you have something to put it in and everything. So there you go. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much gonna be it. You know, again, uh, these seeds are not hard to germinate. They were they are remote germinators, but not they're not going to germinate far from the seed. Uh, you can just kind of dump them in a in a well draining mix, give them a good amount of water, and they will pop. They're not, they're not tough to grow, and they will uh, they will pop up from underneath the tree. Um, however, this one, like I said, this one is not. You can see that this this plant is quite considering this comes from a pretty tropical area. This is pretty resilient considering for seven months out of the year, it may go a week without any water and deal with 80 degree, 80 to 90 degree, 80 to 90 degree heat during the day. So this is just kind of growing here. It was planted small and now it's about uh, 15 feet tall total. So we can go all the way up here. Uh, kind of did this so the sun was kind of blocking through the plant and it's a little bit cooler today uh, be watching my videos I uploaded yesterday I had to kind of give up mid video because of the the pain that I was in uh, dealing with from um, uh, post to uh, tooth extraction so trying to uh, keep on when the when the pain's not there so uh, it's, it's been working so far I want to it's also not that hot out yet especially in the shade so in about half an hour that's going to change so um yeah, that's going to be about it. You can find these at um, in your local big box store. You can find them at your nursery. You could probably, these these actually do well as a in, good indoor plant for quite some time. You can keep them inside for about a week. Uh, bring them out for a day or two. Or just during the day. You know, if you're, uh, say you're up north and, uh, you know, I'm just going to say Chicago, right? And it's winter time. Um, you know, bring you bring them inside in the fall for a week. Bring them outside when, you, you know, it hits 50, 50 60 degrees um, during the day. I mean, you can even keep them outside as long as it doesn't go below freezing. And um, then bring them back inside. They're, they're pretty good indoor plants. They should survive in a pot indoors over a winter. So with all of that said, the seed is going to be relatively small, about the size of a pea. Although it won't be, it'll be kind of a wedge shape, kind of a, um, I'll have like two little cuts on it. And uh, like I said, easy to grow, easy to transplant. You could dig this thing right up and uh replant it somewhere so uh, not a fussy plant a great plant for hedging here in florida so it's used quite a bit and um this is just growing here without any 
help from uh, from you know from the no irrigation, no fertilizer, just green leaves. So uh, anyway, I hope that's been um, inform informative for you guys, and uh, I hope you enjoy these videos. If you do, go ahead and subscribe. And uh, like there there are, there are many videos, and there will be many videos because they are. Uh, there's a lot of species of palms I'm going to cover. I'm going to cover every single one that I can. Um, I'm going to try and be a little bit more, um, in, like I guess you could say a little more informative in the sense that I kind of will give a background of like my opinion on the palm. It's it's a gr it's difficulty in growing, its use in the landscape, its invasiveness, um, and kind of give it an overall score. So let's start with this uh, plant here. This is going to run a little bit longer than I normally want to, but... Um, as far as uh, ease of growing, I'm going to give it a, uh, for the fact that it's uh, relatively cold hardy and grows pretty well without irrigation, I'm going to give this plant a um, an 8.5 out of 10. For uh, for price-wise, I'm going to give it a uh, 9 out of 10. It's relatively cheap to find. Um, for overall beauty, I'm going to give it about a 6.5 to 7 out of 10. And um, it's... I should probably do these. I should probably think of these categories before I make them. So I'm gonna might these might change over time. Um, but uh, an overall cleanliness, uh, I'm gonna give it about a six out of ten because it isn't crown shafted, but it isn't that that dirty of a plant either. It doesn't throw seeds everywhere. So anyway, this is running up to about uh, twelve minutes here, which is way beyond my normal uh, video time. But uh, anyways, I hope you guys enjoy this video, and I hopefully will see you guys soon. Have a good weekend.